All right, everyone, it's time for our annual PlayStation predictions video. If you're somewhat new to the channel, we do this every single year. I've done it for the past five now, I think. And uh, it's what I think the company will do for the following 12 months. And for 2021, this is exciting, of course, because this is PS5's first full year in the market. So there's a lot of topics to cover. And uh, we'll also grade myself from last year, see how well I did. So let's get into it. As per usual, I'm going to leave a timestamp right here, or it should be built right into the YouTube scammer so you can jump right ahead to the 2021 predictions. But for right now, at least, I'm going to grade myself on last year, and we'll start, as always, with our sales predictions. So for PlayStation 4, I said to the present day, the console should be at 122 million units. PS5, I said around 5 million. There's a lot of variables surrounding a new console launch, so I said around 5 million. And then PSVR, I said 5.7 million. So the results are somewhat difficult to grade uh, at least for ps5 and psvr but for playstation 4 our last uh, confirmed figure was 113.8 million and that was back in june i believe uh, if you check vg charts which isn't super accurate but they've got it at 14.8 million and that accounts for more somewhat more recent sales uh, and even if we say that there's even more unaccounted for systems over the holiday period where that is where you can expect more units to be sold i was off and the prediction i made in at the start of 2020 was accounting for a year over year decline but certainly not this aggressive so the actual results are looking like a 45 percent year over year decline so that's pretty aggressive and i didn't account for that so i was a lot more optimistic um, that was not a very good prediction but psvr and ps5 i think i'm actually much closer so with ps5 <laughs> this is where it's tough to grade because sony actually hasn't given us any official numbers as of right now uh, as of filming this video um our rumor is that they sold 3.4 million in a month and that actually lines up fairly well with a few other factors that we've heard so far, which is that Sony definitely has more availability versus PS4. And that was my main thinking when I made the prediction last year. Uh, again, there are a lot of variables at play. How many consoles do they make? Um, you know, how many you know countries is it going to be available in day one? Things like that. But I pretty much thought, okay, they're probably going to make more of these versus PS4. PS4 sold 4.2 million by the end of 2013. So I thought, okay, maybe add about 800,000 more units. Maybe they'll sell around 5 million. So I'm thinking that I'm fairly close to that. And this is the same case for PSVR, although it's even <laughs> more difficult to grade here because PSVR is in a worst case scenario. <clears throat> Our last confirmed figure was at the start of 2020. So it's been a whole year. We have no figure to go on other than just the historical data. And for PSVR, this is actually kind of predictable because Sony has given us um, milestone numbers every million units that they've sold. And um, every million units was about eight to 10 months is when they sold another million units. But the last million, four to five million, was the slowest and the, the worst amount of console or worst amount of units that they actually sold. So I'm actually thinking that um, 0.7 or 700,000 PSVR units is somewhat accurate. I'm thinking that might actually be fairly close. Um, so I'll take W's on both of these. Um, it, it's not dead on accurate, but I think it's about as good as it's gonna get here for um, not having any confirmed numbers to really discuss or go over. Now getting into our number two prediction, this is where it gets really interesting. I said PlayStation 5 reveal event in February, similar to the PS4 one, and that Sony shows the box this time. So should go without saying, but let's just note this right away. A lot of this stuff was said without COVID in mind where it dramatically changed um, the, entire, the entire timeline of how the next gen news cycle really rolled out. So I know it was frustrating to be a part of it when there was so much time in between when Sony would give us official information and things like that. So clearly this was wrong. Um, but to a slight degree, it was somewhat right in that, yeah, we did not get a reveal event in February. However, the first um, major PlayStation 5 reveal that we got, the one that's probably the most notable and recognizable was the Future of Gaming live stream. That was in June, so around the E3 timeframe. And that was really considered more of our, our formal PS5 reveal. And that actually did include the box. But that was so close to when the machine was actually going to be entering mass manufacturing. So they really had to show that thing before um, before it would leak out. But I actually expected, okay, right the wrong of the 2013 reveal, show people what it looks like ahead of time. That way, you know, you don't have all these memes and things going around of, oh, Sony didn't show the box. They did a console reveal without the console. So this was largely wrong, but I'd like to think to a degree I got something right in there. <laughs> 
Number three, I said Sony's secret San Diego team would finally be revealed, working on a PS5 exclusive, new IP, and this didn't happen, of course, so we'll talk more about that later. Uh, we'll jump right to number four here, which is Blue Point Games. Their title was a Demon's Souls remake. Well, the prediction was it was a Demon's Souls remake, and that the developer would join Worldwide Studios. So the first half of that prediction is fairly safe, considering that at the time we had plenty of rumors telling us that was the case. Uh, and I remember some people were apprehensive, like, no, it's not Demon's Souls, it's this or that. Or, we kind of knew it was Demon's Souls, so that wasn't really... Um, too surprising but the developer did not join worldwide studios again we'll talk more about that later number five i said a ps4 super slim and a ps4 pro slim would be introduced alongside an msrp price cut now this was really one of my more outlandish predictions and looking back hindsight is everything the ps4 pro part of this was really not a great decision uh we recently talked about this but ps4 pro in all likelihood is probably discontinued and that's because it's in a weird spot where it's a low volume machine it's priced right next to the digital edition ps5 so you would have to price cut it but it's already low volume and to even consider the idea that sony would r d slimming it down when it's again low volume it just financially that doesn't really it's not a sound decision from their perspective so um and i didn't think of that at the time when i made this prediction so that wouldn't have made a whole lot of sense uh, PS4 Super Slim, eh, you know, maybe, right? They did this with PlayStation 3, um, and you could argue that for PS4, where it's highly successful and it still has a decent amount of shelf life left, um, but, you know, we have we just talked about the rapid decline in sales, and certainly 2021 is probably going to look even worse for PS4. Um, Sony does want to transition, transition players from PS4 to PS5, and PS5 can play PS4 software, so they might not be super concerned with moving PS4 hardware, and um, I, so that probably also isn't going to happen. Number six, during E3, an upgrade program is announced either for physical PS4 hardware with partnered retailers or perhaps Sony's main website, uh, or for your games, PS5 versions, if they're available, there could be an upgrade program there as well. That was kind of like an open-ended prediction, but um, there was no upgrade programs from PS4 to PS5 in terms of hardware, nothing with retailers or anything like that, and of course COVID, if there was any sort of plan that was not going to happen with, you know, the touching and whatnot or trading in your hardware, that didn't happen. However, um, there were upgrade programs for PS4 software to PS5. It's, um, well, for the most part, pretty straightforward. We did have a weird area where some people were accidentally playing PS4 versions when they had the PS5 edition downloaded onto their, you know, console. But for the most part, there is an upgrade program built into PlayStation 5 to upgrade PS4 games. So that part was you know, that part was accurate. Uh, number seven, I said next generation PlayStation Now and remote play, the promise of new tech, low latency, more games, uh, that it would be a, that there would be a massive push. And yeah, this didn't happen whatsoever. In fact, PlayStation Now feels like a complete afterthought on PS5. Um, it really is largely the same service that it was from PlayStation 4, just moved over uh, to PlayStation 5. Um, the entire interface, how you interact with it, it's all the same more or less. And uh, I was really expecting Sony to do some sort of major revamp to, to make a name for themselves in this space. It's still really strange that Sony was there in 2014 with a streaming service and they've been doing remote play for even longer. And yet they're not part of the conversation amongst Stadia, xCloud, Game Pass, things like that. It's just, it's bizarre to me that they're not making more of a push in this area. Number eight, PS5 launch games include Blue Point's title and Gran Turismo 7, possibly Gorilla's new IP or Horizon 2, but that might be a first 12 month game. So uh, the PS5 launch did include Demon's Souls, no Gran Turismo 7. This is actually probably expected uh, next year, well, this year currently. And uh, well, I would say Horizon was fairly accurate because if it's within the next 12 months and we're expecting it within the next 12 months, then yeah, that part of it was true. Number nine, I said no mention of a next-gen PSVR or backwards compatibility beyond PS4, at least for now. So there was a level of optimism in that um, in that prediction. And again, this is something where you look back and you think, ah, that really didn't make a whole lot of sense. But that's because there was a lot of patents at that time referring to backwards compatibility. Um, but that, I believe, actually referred to largely how PlayStation 5 handles it. And then for a next-gen PSVR, that was more of a safe prediction because we already had a good idea that it would be... I think overwhelming to, to get uh, a new PSVR announced alongside PS5 and that was a, a comment that Sony even made themselves um, I believe in 2019 as what well, mid 2019 so that was a large part of why I thought we wouldn't expect uh, new VR right away. 
Number 10, I said PS5 and Series X would be priced at $500. Both would be extremely compelling and yet Sony would edge out an early lead. This is for the most part true. Um, PS5 and Series X are $500 here in the US and those are the main consoles that most people are buying outside of the current low volume machines of Series S and the digital edition. Um, and I think they're both extremely compelling. Uh, I know this is a PlayStation channel, so it would be tough for others to agree about Series X, but I've been really enjoying mine. And if you're an Xbox diehard, it's um, you know, a lot of people have been really enjoying Series X. Uh, the impressions there are great as well, and it is a it is a great machine. Um, it's just tough with a brand new generation where it's very easy to exhaust all the software that is available. So whether it's PS5 or you've already played Spider-Man, Demon Souls, um, you know, even Sackboy Big Adventure, where that's a cross-gen game. I mean, for the most part, you're going to exhaust any sort of truly next-gen game. So right now, a lot of it is playing, you know, last-gen software. Um, and the edge out and early lead thing, I mean, yeah, Sony manufactured more of them and that's really going to be the big advantage here. Um, but realistically, and I've, you know, said this for a while, Sony's probably going to lead, lead the market again. And that's not really a bad thing because again, Microsoft's just been in a different direction and they've really been okay with that. But number 10, I think for the most part, I got that one, uh, got that one dead on. Now, onto the fun part. What do I think will happen for PlayStation in 2021? We'll start with our sales predictions. There's the current numbers that we've just talked about. Uh, a little rough for PSVR and PS5, keep that in mind. But for PlayStation 4, I'm going to predict 119 million units. This would put it on a pretty steep decline. So remember, year over year, it was rough for PS4 in 2020. It's only going to get worse from this point forward. So 119 million. For PlayStation 5, I'm going to say 20 million. So. Um, this would be pretty much the same deal as how I predicted the start of 2020. Uh, I just think Sony's going to make more of these versus PS4. And by the end of 2014, actually right into 2015 when they announced this, but PS4 was at around 18 and a half million units. So uh, I just think Sony's going to really kick it into high gear for manufacturing to meet all that demand. And demand does look very high for PS5. So I think they'll do a little bit more versus uh, PS4. And keep in mind, this would technically already account for the 5 million that we think are sold right now. So really, this year would be uh, about 15 million. Uh, we have to remember that peak year for consoles is usually year three. So um, this number will be much more aggressive when we say start talking about 2023 but for right now at least uh, 20 million by the end of 2021 for psvr this is also where it would get very rough and i don't even know if it's worth predicting but let's just throw a number out there for right now 6.2 million i imagine that this is definitely going to be the last time that we'll ever talk about psvr numbers because i'll be surprised if we even get um, another update on the milestone of say 6 million but if we do that's probably the end of it Number two, first party PS5 game upgrades come alongside related projects. So basically what I'm saying here is that we've got a lot of PS4 software that launched within the last year to two years, and it would be nice to have some PS5 native enhancements, and you could easily match that with games that we're expecting this year. So when Horizon launches, why don't you do Horizon Zero Dawn on PlayStation 5 native enhancements, right? So we've got the PC version that can easily show us, you know, what we could expect on PlayStation 5. Same with uh, God of War. In fact, right now, if you've got the disc, uh, play the game unpatched on PS5. That way you get it at 4K and 60 frames per second. But um, this is something where, you know, update the game um, and give it more of a soft level of enhancements, right? So don't necessarily go the extra mile of the Spider-Man remaster where they actually did quite a lot. And that's why they tried to justify it by indirectly charging for it through the ultimate edition of Spider-Man Miles Morales. But hey, even if you say go that extra mile, if there's something on the docket, okay, charge 10, 20 dollars, some sort of upgrade fee, um, do some sort of pack in with um, the sequels that we're expecting. Same with Gran Turismo um, or uh, Days Gone, Ghost of Tsushima. There's um, The Last of Us Part Two, which you know what? Are you really gonna drop this uh, factions multiplayer? Who knows how it'll look if it's completely free to play? If it's you know the same mode packed in with the, the disc version? But like, you know, I mean, kind of makes too much sense. I think there's a lot of first-party games that should see some native PS5 enhancements, and whether they're free or they dress it up enough to charge them, I think we should see a lot of this stuff. Number three, a services shakeup, or at least a, a small service shakeup here, which is. PlayStation Now should start including online play for all games, meaning that you could subscribe to PS Now and then let go of PS Plus uh, and or offer PlayStation Now included with Plus as an example. So you can get both uh, for one. Now, it's it's important to know you can't necessarily just get rid of Plus at this point and say, okay, PS Now is the new service moving forward because one, it's, it's more expensive than Plus and 
there's 45 million active plus members you can't remove that service or completely consolidate it um, at least not overnight right that would really mess things up on sony's end once it's here it's here you can't you know at this point it's additive we have to add on top of that add options so the options would be playstation now if you didn't know uh, currently you can subscribe to ps now and let go of plus and technically you could still play online but only for those games within playstation now but what i think would make more sense is say okay if you don't want to subscribe to playstation plus if you think ps now is a better value proposition you can subscribe to now let go of plus and ps now will still give you that option to play online across all titles right not just the games inside now everything and then of course also offer say $15 a month or 12, 13, whatever, make it favorable to the consumer where they can have plus and now you still have that instant game collection, the PlayStation Plus collection. I mean, it gets muddy when you have all this stuff um, getting thrown around, but it's, it's hard to remove things once they're there. So I think this would probably be the best way to do it uh, moving forward. Number four, new DualSense colors and PS5 Play colors and stock will be severely limited, uh, at least for the plates. This is something where, I mean, it's a natural expectation that Sony will offer plates of their own um, for different colors, uh, maybe for special edition consoles, and that would be an easy way to sell these things at a <laughs> kind of a ridiculous price. I'm expecting that whenever Sony offers these, it's probably a questionably annoying price, like Apple-esque prices, where it's like maybe... 70 to a hundred dollars for new plates and it's like i don't want to pay that but at the same time they can get away with charging you that because it's like do you want to pay a hundred dollars to change the plates on the fly and it's super easy no painting nothing like that or you know how we've been used to it where if you want a special edition console or a different colored console that meant buying a new console which would be four or five hundred dollars so i'm kind of expecting that alongside the fact that whatever they do um for plate colors gone easily gone we might even have a a mini scalper situation where then they're on ebay for 150 something plus or or whatever i can just easily picture this dual sense colors i think you're going to see some um your typical solid blue black red things like that for the first year nothing too wild and maybe those will also be rough in terms of stock but this is how i anticipate that going number five a soft reveal for the next generation playstation vr so initially i want to make this no psvr talk for this year but i think actually what would be appropriate as a soft reveal and as we've discussed we don't have a lot of reference points here we only have the current headset on ps4 which for that it had a reveal during gdc 2014 which technically was the first year of ps4 and that was very transparent we saw the headset we got specs things like that but it didn't launch until 2016 um so that's two years where we're waiting for the headset to actually come out and so i think this time around it could be closer to say how ps5 happened where we got a wired.com article um they they told us a lot about it but we didn't see much of anything and so i think that would actually work for um, the next gen headset right now if it is say slated for 2023 uh, which would be the peak year of the console so that would certainly be favorable on sony's end to launch the headset during that time frame or maybe they do want to make it earlier but either way that's how i'm looking at it right now maybe they'll they'll definitely talk about it this year but um it would be just that a blog post or something saying yes we're working on it it's not named here are some quick specs and kind of our goals with it and that's it number six sony acquires blue point games uh, this is too obvious. I mean, if we were to make a separate video called Studios That Sony Should Acquire, they'd be number one. They fit the bill perfectly. Um, they've got all the criteria met for how Sony evaluates studios, which if you look at history, it's um, a long working relationship, um, you know, a portfolio that has uh, a proven track record, and that's what Bluepoint's done for years with Sony. Um, and under Sony's ownership, they can certainly flourish and, and grow naturally and do better, bigger and better projects, uh, multiple projects. Um, there is a rumor that they technically are working on a second project, which is apparently a Metal Gear Solid remake. I don't think I've ever mentioned that on this channel because I don't really believe too much in that rumor, but um, be that as it may, makes a lot of sense and that's even outside the fact that there was another rumor suggesting that they are in fact getting acquired and that we should find out about it by the end of at least by the end of february but even ignoring that i think they should be acquired um out of all the studios that could be purchased from sony's perspective they they fit the bill number seven a state of play reveals gorilla game second project which is an fps and i think a new ip 
And we'll also learn about Ben Studio's next game, which I think will be Days Gone 2. Um, now, whether this is the same state of play or separate or whatever they happen, I don't really care. But I think these are the two games that we'll learn about this year that will be, say, slated for 2022. And that's what we have to keep in mind with uh, Sony's first party right now is that uh, we know what most of them are doing or what they have done. If they've recently shipped PS4 projects, then you have to figure, okay, they'll start production now and they might be slated to launch titles or ship titles in 2023. Whereas the ones that we know about what they're working on right now, they're largely working on the current year game. So it's actually, there's, there's not much room for what we're expecting in 2022, which is why we have to think what kind of software would fill that gap. And those are two projects where I think that would make sense. And that goes into our next prediction, which is actually, I don't think we're gonna see uh, Sony's secret San Diego team this year. Um, I think we were actually being pretty optimistic for the last few times that we've talked about the studio or, or predicted them doing a reveal. It seems like, you know, they 2018 was definitely their, their earliest start. And um, they actually, you know, we've gotten some indicators now that they actually went through a few different projects up until they settled on the one that they're working on right now, which is that AAA cinematic third person experience, which is more than likely another Uncharted or something like that. Um, but it seems like it's probably too early. That might be slated as a 2023 game. Um, maybe we'll get a reveal, but I still think that whatever they're working on isn't actually coming until 2023. And that actually goes to number nine, which is that, okay, 2022, we need to think about what would fill that year. And that's um, basically what we've been hearing with uh, Sony's strategy on PlayStation 5 and them getting very aggressive with um, third party and trying to scope out any sort of deals that they can. So my number nine is, yeah, Silent Hill is real. I think we could see it this year at some point, right? That might be a title where it's revealed, but not coming out until 2023. I do think that game will get some sort of formal reveal. And then uh, just more third party stuff in general. This is where I, I think it could really go either way. Uh, it might be difficult to grade by the end of the year, but for the most part, I think this is something that they're probably going to stick with. And um, this might be what they would leverage to fill 2022. Because again, when you look at their first party, it would be tough for a lot of the a lot of their developers that have shipped a PS4 game within the last year or this year to try and muster up something for 2022, right? Unless it's a smaller piece of content, but that's not always gonna work for another Miles Morales, right? So um, it's kind of my line of thinking there. Number 10, iterative system software updates, no major headline updates. So basically right now with PS5 out of the box by default, it will update system software in rest mode. Uh, the numbering scheme is longer. It's not easy to see what you're even on anymore. Uh, I think Sony's trying to step away from having the spotlight on these software updates. And I think part of that is because, you know, from Sony's end and from the engineering perspective, um, it's problematic when you put out these big updates, say 3.0, 4.0, where it has a lot of features and changes, because when you do that, it actually also introduces a lot of issues. And that's happened on PSP, PS3, PS4. I think they want to step away from that. And so with PS5, I actually expect that we won't have major updates anymore. It'll really be more a matter of more updates, but you know, those updates will include one new feature, two new features, back to one new feature, things like that. It's not like they won't change and alter PS5 to the to the community's demands, but I think we'll be stepping away from those major headline updates. All right, that is pretty much everything, and I definitely could have done more, but I, I swear, I try to keep these videos like at least under 20 minutes, but I can talk all day about this stuff easily, and I know this video is gonna be really long, so we'll cut it there. Um, thank you so much for watching. If you haven't yet, please subscribe for the best PlayStation news, reviews, and updates that are here on YouTube. You can follow me on Twitter at Mystic Ryan, and that is it. I will see you all in my next video. You take it easy.